Are you saying that we could expect a criminal referral against Joe Biden for money laundering? Is that what you just said? Well, I, th I think that it's no secret Joe Biden's committed many crimes. Now, when I see Comer go on Maria Bartiromo and say, well, it's no secret Joe Biden's committed a lot of crimes, I say, show me. And Comer can't. The failed sham Biden impeachment inquiry continues to wither on life support, but the Grand Inquisitor, Republican Congressman James Comer, refuses to pull the plug. And as a consequence, he's even being called out by legendary former Fox News host Bill O'Reilly. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, we haven't talked about the failed sham Biden impeachment inquiry for a minute because Republicans haven't talked about it because they can't make their mind up if they want to proceed with some sort of impeachment resolution against the president, where they probably don't have the votes for that, um, or if they just want to say, you know what, listen, we've spent a year and a half on this. It's time to you know, put it to bed. We didn't find evidence of an impeachable offense, and now we need to defeat President Biden at the ballot box. They can't make their mind up, and there's evidence to indicate internally and externally that they're not happy with how it's went. But again, they just can't bring themselves to truly let it go and make their peace with it. So now James Comer, the grand inquisitor of this impeachment effort, is back making the rounds on the Fox propaganda network and other right wing media outlets to say, listen, uh, yeah, the, it's still ongoing. And actually, as a matter of fact, we may recommend criminal referrals to the Department of Justice, not just against members of the Biden family, but perhaps President Biden himself. We're going to play some of these clips and then we'll get to Bill O'Reilly's response. That's fair enough, but you sent criminal referrals for Hunter Biden and, and, and James Biden over perjury for lying to Congress. Where are the criminal referrals if that's all true? Where are the criminal referrals for FARA, for money laundering, for corruption, mm -hmm. for influence peddling? Where are those? Yeah. Well, we're just beginning, Maria, and a lot of those crimes that the Bidens have committed, the statute of limitations has run out. That was one of the complaints that the IRS whistleblower said when we had him testify in our committee. But we're going to deal with those, and we're going to deal with Joe Biden. Um, are you saying that we could expect a criminal referral against Joe Biden for money laundering? Is that what you just said? Well, I, th I think that it's no secret Joe Biden's committed many crimes, and I think that you're going to see a, a report very soon. Uh, that report is imminent. Uh, that'll probably be an interim report that uh, that updates everyone on the crimes that Biden and his administration have committed throughout this investigation and through the, the years of the Obama-Biden uh, administration. Well, you have subpoena power. Why not subpoena these people as well? Put them in the hot seat. We've subpoenaed, we've subpoenaed all the associates. The only person we haven't talked to is Joe Biden. As you know, it's hard to subpoena a sitting president or the Democrats would have done that to Donald Trump. But I think that what we've done in all of our depositions okay. and interviews has been very substantive and it's going to be very useful in accountability. Then they've got these criminal referrals. And as I've said many times over the past week, we're not finished. The criminal referrals were just the, the beginning of the accountability phase. We've gone through great links and we've been very transparent and substantive with the American people. So there you have it. And again, even Maria Bartiromo, Fox propagandist, she's not impressed with James Comer. She continues to let herself be gassed up and psyched up by Comer's obvious lies. But unlike a lot of others, she actually says, OK, well, you've hyped me up. You've you've titillated me here. When are you actually going to deliver? And you can see the visible disappointment when he continues to say, well, well, you know, I mean, it's coming, Maria, and we've been really super substantive. That, that doesn't work for her, and it doesn't work for large swaths of the Republican Party. Again, the polling on this is pretty clear. There's very little support for impeaching President Biden, and James Comer is the primary culprit for that because he's had 16 months to pull a rabbit out of his hat, and he's failed to do so. And again, it's so bad that Bill O'Reilly, the legendary former Fox News host and frenemy of Jon Stewart, uh, he is also calling Comer out for you know letting his mouth write checks that he cannot cash at all. This is what Bill O'Reilly has to say. Now, when I see Comer go on Maria Bartiromo and say, well, it's no secret Joe Biden's committed a lot of crimes, I say, show me. And Comer can't. Now, if Joe Biden took money in the form of services from his brother and son, they got him. Right. But okay. they don't yet. 
but they don't they can't show that. Right. So at this point, it's all a bunch of bilge. Word of the day, B-I-L-G-E, bilge. That what comes out. There you have it, folks. When you lose Bill O'Reilly, Bill O'Reilly, who, by the way, was he was and during the Obama years. I mean, this guy was basically the proto uh, Hannity, the proto Jesse Waters, right? Like, I mean, he he's very much in many ways set the playbook for the Fox propaganda network. So he's somebody who grades the Republicans on a curve, grades Trump on a curve. He wants Comer to be right. Desperately, nothing would make Bill O'Reilly or Maria Bartiromo happier than Comer actually producing the goods on President Biden. But even they're like, Ugh, this is ridiculous. You failed to do so. But again, it just goes to show this has been the primary initiative, the primary political initiative of the House Republican majority. They've had the majority since January 2023. And the only other things that they've done of political consequence is repeatedly try to fill the speakership with Kevin McCarthy. I think it was like 13, 14, 15 attempts, an, an historic number. Then they booted Speaker McCarthy um, at an historic uh, rate. You know, it was the first time in history that a speaker uh, of the House of Representatives was removed by his own party. And the clown show has persisted in many respects under Speaker Mike Johnson, right? But other than those embarrassments, this embarrassment has been the primary application of political capital. They have nothing to show for it. And it's politically risky. As we talked about in previous videos, I mean, impeachments are a two-edged sword. You know, when Republicans attempted to impeach President Clinton, it backfired on them the next election cycle. And even with Donald Trump, his two impeachments, you know, they were much more substantive. They had much more public support behind them than this impeachment effort against Biden did, but because they were they failed to convict uh, Donald Trump in the 2019 slash early 2020 impeachment for his perfectly good phone call to Vladimir Zelensky, it actually helped Trump in a lot of respects in terms of the polls. So this is a two edged sword, and Democrats should use this, and they have. You know, freshman Democrats like Maxwell Frost, Dan Goldman, Jasmine Crockett, Jared Moskowitz, they have been making hay of this. They have been skewering. The Republicans publicly on social media during hearings, every chance they get, and they've gone viral to do so. This is important to denigrate and to insult and to mock and do, to in breed contempt in the American people for House Republicans. And I think it's a really effective way to do so, especially because Democrats otherwise have very little power in the House of Representatives or kind of at the legislative mercy of Mike Johnson. So, with what power and attention and time they have, I think they've been applying it very, very well. But again, you've lost, it's clear, you've lost so much of the Fox Propaganda Network. You've lost uh, Bill O'Reilly. So the only question is, at what point will James Comer and the House Republicans officially, finally make a move? At what point will they call a vote to impeach President Biden? Or at what point will they announce that the impeachment inquiry is over and that they're issuing a full report for the American people? I have no idea. Maybe you do. Let me know what you think in the comments.